Hi guys, Ian Wargame here, welcome to the channel and welcome to this, a special episode of In The War Room. And the reason why it's special is because we've reached 300 sub subscribers and um, I thought I'd do a little special video as it's a little milestone to get to and I thought in the future we'll do some more of these as well when we hit some milestones. So this is basically a special, it's pure fun, it's um, in regard to the gameplay or in regard to the tactics going to be used in this, um, but this is basically looking at infantry tactics and organisation and the first one we're looking at is the British Army but we're going to look at the British fighting platoon and um, yeah I just thought you know what we can take a look at the historically accurate um, representation of them and see if we can mimic and represent it on the bolt action table like I said this is just pure fun you're probably never going to use this in a game of bolt action but I might do it at some point but we're just going to take a look at it and see how we can incorporate it into our game if possible so it's not going to be like a tournament type playing tactic this is just pure simple fun so I hope you guys enjoy it let us know what you think in the comments but um, let's dive in and enjoy Enjoy the chat. To begin with, we are going to be taking a look at the British Infantry Platoon organisation set out in 1944. As part of this topic, we are going to take a look at how we can mimic the organisation and tactics involved historically and incorporate them into our games of bolt action, to which, by the end, we'll be able to field a accurate or close to representation of the British Infantry Fighting Platoon. For all armies, the infantry are the backbone of the fighting power and all are organised in various ways. For the British, it's the infantry platoon, or broken down into sections. Other armies may refer to these as squads, but for the British, we refer to them as sections. We will first take a look at the foundation of an infantry platoon by discussing the section in detail. The infantry section, or rifle section as it's known, will consist of 10 men. It's important to note that during the war, the section may find itself in a strength of 8 men. There are various reasons behind this, from casualties, wounded men, leave, or sick soldiers, will sometimes see a section reduced to 8 instead of 10. However, when a section is reduced to 8 men, it's still operationally effective and capable of fighting just as if it had a strength of 10. For this example in this video, we will be looking at the strength of the section as if it had 10 men. In command of the section is a corporal known as the section commander. He is armed with a stem gun, carrying its irrelevant ammunition, and his responsibilities are for the entire section, leading it and controlling its fire during combat situations. The bulk of the section was made up of six riflemen, armed with Enfield rifles number four, carrying ten clips of five rounds plus two Bren gun magazines. The riflemen were the assaulting and main fighting body of the section. The remaining three men in the section formed a machine gun team, led by a lance corporal, armed with a rifle and its relevant ammunition, also carrying four Bren gun magazines. His responsibility was for controlling the team, direction and rate of fire from the machine gun. Also, he will assist the section commander in commanding the section. Machine gunner number one carried the Bren gun and operated it, carrying five magazines and was responsible for the upkeep and maintenance of the weapon. The third member of the machine gun team carried a rifle and four Bren gun magazines. His responsibility was to keep the machine gun supplied with ammunition and assisted in the maintenance and upkeep of the weapon. In a platoon, there will be three of these sections, which is led by a platoon HQ section of six men. Commanding this section was the platoon commander, with a rank of first or second lieutenant. He was armed with a revolver, binoculars, map and compass, and a signal pistol. His assistant in command was the platoon sergeant, armed with a rifle and its ammunition. He also carried a map, compass, and binoculars. Responsibilities included commanding the platoon should the commander become injured or become a casualty. Two other members of the HQ section were the runner and signaller. The runner was armed with a rifle ammunition and a bicycle. His job was to relay messages to the section commanders from platoon commander and also relay messages to other platoon commanders. The signaller was armed with a rifle and radio. He would be in command of the radio and be in contact with the company commander. The remainder of the HQ section formed the two-inch mortar team. It was led by a lance corporal armed with a rifle carrying HE and smoke rounds. Mortar number one carried the mortar and was armed with a stem gun carrying HE rounds and smoke rounds, responsibly for directing and firing the mortar. Mortar number two was armed with a rifle, carrying HE, smoke, and was responsible for loading the mortar and cleaning. The whole platoon would consist of a HQ section of six men and three sections of ten, with a rank structure of one officer, one sergeant, three corporals, four lance corporals, and thirty privates. 
Next, we're going to take a look at how we can organise the British Infantry Platoon into our game of bolt action. With the generic reinforced platoon outlined in the British Army's book, we are capable of recreating such a platoon we discussed. To begin with, with the HQ section, to note, we are assuming that all ranks are of the regular rating. The platoon commander slot will be taken up by a first or second lieutenant with two regular soldiers consisting of the sergeant and the runner. The signaller will take up the role as a forward observer with a regular soldier representing the mortar team Lance Corporal. For this reason, the remainder of the HQ platoon make up a two inch light mortar team who are unable to take an additional man for the spotter. To fit the platoon as close to the outline generic list is how we can represent our fighting platoon HQ. Our signaller is the forward observer must be visualised in a relay and messages to Command HQ allowing artillery or airstrikes to be called in. Two of our infantry sections then make up the generic slots. All sections are of the strength of 10 men with the following equipment, one submachine gun, eight rifles and one light machine gun. Our third section will form the additional slot to the reinforced platoon selection. Again, 10 men, one equipped with a submachine gun, eight rifles and one light machine gun. Section Tactics British infantry perform various formations and fighting tactics. However, for a game of bolt action, this can be difficult to represent or achieve due to game rule restrictions. We can, however, represent a section assault tactic. To be able to do this, we must first alter our reinforced platoon organisation to the following. HQ selection remains the same, along with the mortar team and forward observer team. However, for our infantry selection slots, we have to create additional slots to break our section up into fire team or assaulting team. Our two compulsory infantry slots will be formed from the entire section of one section. The first, a five-man team, one with an SMG and four rifles. The second, four rifles and one LMG. These we will call Charlie Fire Team and Delta Fire Team. In our additional plus slots, we recreate the same selection process for two sections. That's one team, one SMG with four rifles, second team, four rifles and one LMG. The last slot reaches our limit of infantry selection. We are unable to break down three sections into five teams. So this fire team remains as a full section of 10 men. This does recreate a platoon tactic as one and two sections would form the assaulting sections with three sections remaining as reinforcements should the assault continue further on from its objective. If, however, we are to use a theatre force selector that allow for four additional infantry slots in a platoon organisation, we could break down three sections into the same two-man fire teams as one and two sections. The reason behind breaking our section down into two fire teams is as follows. Charlie fire team, consisting of a corporal with a stem gun and four rifles, would perform the assault using cover to outflank a position. Delta fire team, consisting of the lance corporal, three other riflemen and one Bren gunner, would form the fire support, assisting the assault in section by keeping a good rate of fire on the enemy position. We will now look at the section attack in more detail. To begin with, our section will advance with a fire manoeuvre. The section is split down into fire teams, Charlie and Delta. One fire team will advance while the other keeps a rate of fire to suppress the enemy. When one fire team stops, it takes up the fire support with the other team advancing. These bounds will be repeated till the objective is cleared or the advance point to the contact is established. To assault the position, the section commander will order his lance corporal and bring gun team to suppress the enemy position while he and his team flank left or right. In this example, our section is going to use the hedge on the right as cover. Once level, the commander will order his team to fix bayonets and he will lead the assault. The bring gun team at this point will increase its rate of fire to cover the section while it advances. Once eliminated, the section will regroup and carry on with their patrol. This section level attack can be performed on the platoon level. In the next example, we're going to look at how the whole platoon will conduct an assault. Our platoon then will advance in a triangle or arrowhead formation. One section at the front, HQ in the middle, two and three section on either flank. When the enemy is located, one section will become the fire support section and begin suppressing the enemy position. The mortar team will move up to position next to one section, with the platoon commander taking two and three sections to the left or right flank position. When the platoon commander is in position, the mortar team will fire smoke 
to cover two and three sections of barns. One section will increase its rate of fire to further suppress the enemy. Once the position is cleared, the platoon will carry on with its patrol and move on to its other objectives. Okay guys, th there we have it. Thanks very much for watching. Um, again, let us know what you think in the comments. Uh, this is, like I said, it's just complete fun. This is something that we could, or you could use if you really wanted to. You could incorporate it somehow in your game of bolt action if you're looking for a kind of that historically correct sort of um, mentality or correct uh, way of fielding a British fighting platoon. Now, obviously, like I said, uh, with the rule system, we will be a bit restricted on what we can do. But in theory wise, um, it's quite good. However, practicality of it on the table will be a lot more difficult because we're restricted by certain things in the game rules. And it's very difficult to actually really fully represent exactly what's going on or how we can fully get that into the game itself. But like I said, this is just pure fun. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Anyway, uh, let us know what you think. Hit us up in the comments. Come and say hello. And uh, yeah, look forward to some more. When we hit uh, another milestone, we'll do some more videos like this. So. Again, I'm your Wargamer, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll catch you again soon.